Welcome back to America's Now. There was a time when sugar was king in Cuba. For almost two centuries, this Caribbean island was the world's largest exporter of sugar. But in recent years, the industry has shrunk to a fraction of its former glory. As Cuba starts to push through its market reforms, one of its priorities is to revitalize the industry, modernize its management structure, and look for help from abroad. Our correspondent in Cuba, Michael Voss, has this report. Cuba has turned to Brazil for help in reviving sugar production. This state-of-the-art mechanized cane cutter is one of dozens imported from Brazil, part of a $200 million credit line for the Caribbean island to buy modern agricultural machinery. Yet this year's sugar harvest was only slightly better than last year's and well below target. The weather didn't help, it rained at the wrong times. But nor has decades of centralized bureaucratic controls and a lack of investment. Otramon Madero is head of the state-run cane cutting crew, which goes from farm to farm during the harvesting season. These new machines allow them to work around the clock. This equipment is part of new technology purchased this year to set up two 24-hour working teams. It is higher technology, there are minimum breakdowns, and it can operate in high-yield sugarcane plantations. This is just one of several ways that Cuba is trying to modernize the sugar industry. As well as investing in new equipment and overseas expertise, Cuba is also decentralizing the sugar industry giving greater autonomy to local producers. Three years ago, in a bid to boost production, Cuba replaced the Ministry of Sugar with a state-run holding company as Cuba. It now consists of 13 provisional sugar companies that operate all of the island's 56 mills, along with the 850 sugarcane farms. One big difference is that the revenues from sugar exports no longer go directly into state coffers. As Cuba can keep most of what it earns and recently announced that it will plough back more than 60% of its revenues into new equipment and technology. The government is letting us have a bigger role in making decisions and solving our problems in a timely manner. Aprenda a tomar decisiones y aprenda a resolver los problemas con una mayor rapidez. Leo Bel Perez is head of communications for As Cuba. Del dinero que se aportaba antes al presupuesto del Estado. Less money from the mill will be going to the government. We will be able to raise salaries for our workers and at the same time invest in the factory to build a stronger sugar industry. A los trabajadores, pero también. For almost two centuries, sugar was this island's most important industry and export. Shortly after Fidel Castro came to power in 1959, he started expropriating all of the sugar plantations and refineries, many of them American-owned. The US, Cuba's largest customer, stopped buying, so the Soviet Union stepped in instead. When Soviet President Nikita Khrushchev offered to buy Cuba's sugar on preferential terms, Cuba's leader, Fidel Castro, launched an all-out effort to boost production. He set a target of 10 million tons and sent thousands of people to work in the fields, cutting cane during harvest time. Young and old, factory workers and office bureaucrats, women as well as men. Fidel Castro played his part too. While Che Guevara bared his chest for the cameras, stacking sacks of sugar. 
Cuba never reached its goal, but by the late 1980s it had boosted production to a record 8 million metric tons a year. It wasn't to last for long, though. When the Soviet Union collapsed in the early 1990s, Cuba could no longer sustain such a large sugar industry, and this deserted factory is one of more than 100 sugar mills that were forced to close across the island. The government laid off more than 100,000 people and stopped planting sugar on more than a million hectares of land. Today, only 56 mills remain in operation. By 2010, production had slumped from a high of 8 million tonnes to just 1.1 million, the lowest yield in more than a century. This focused mines and revitalizing the sugar industry became one of the key elements of President Raul Castro's economic reforms. Arrayo Tanyo is in charge of production at the 30th of November sugar mill in Artemisas province. It's about 100 kilometers from the capital, Havana. She told me she has noticed a difference since as Cuba replaced the sugar ministry. Previously, investment was planned from the top to the bottom. Now it's the other way around. This is needed to increase efficiency and production levels in the company. One of the differences is that workers are now receiving productivity-related pay. It's a big change from the days when everyone in Cuba earned more or less the same. Over the past three years, payments have been done according to production. This is going to be expanded next year. We're hoping to improve working and living conditions and increase the productivity of this factory. Now, Arayo Tonio and everyone else here could soon find themselves under new management. The 30th of November is one of seven sugar mills in the country which are listed as candidates for foreign investment. Last year, Ascuba signed a 13-year management contract with the Brazilian company Odebrecht to operate one of the island's other sugar mills. It marks the first time since the revolution that a foreign company has been allowed to manage a Cuban sugar mill. This is about the improvement of sugar production. It's not capitalism because the production means are owned by the state. We keep social production systems according to our views. But yes, there is the perception that the economy is the center of our problem. This is already one of the more modern mills in the country. It generates its own electricity by burning waste products from the refining process. But very few of these Cuban factories will be eligible for foreign investment or management contracts. This sugar mill was built after the revolution, but anyone investing in the older mills, which were expropriated from their original owners, risk being prosecuted in the United States. All but eight of the island's sugar refineries were built more than half a century ago, which leaves Cuba responsible for financing the rest. The government estimates that the industry needs some $10 million a year in investment compared to the $3 million it currently receives. Only then will the sugar mountains grow and Cuban sugar become a major export item once again. Our thanks to Michael Voss for that report. Although the overall sugar output from Cuba increased, it did not reach the 1.8 million tons that was expected for this season. The climate didn't help. High temperatures during the winter season and frequent rains ruined some of the crops. Coming up. A candid conversation with one of the most popular writers of our time. <laughs> the way we talk to each other is usually very ironic, especially I talk very ironically, and he puts up with it. But he understands that it's, uh, it's the Chilean way of saying, I love you. America's Next.